are my book friends. I'm Addie and you're now watching Books and Tea Time and I am so freaking pumped for this video because we're going to be talking about all the books that I want to read for the spooky season and if there's one thing that I love it is making a long list of books that I want to read that I'm inevitably never going to finish. I'm a list maker and as much as I love crossing things off my list I just love making a list so I have quite the lengthy pile the lengthy list of different books that I want to read through the rest of September and October maybe even early November just the spookiest of vibes I love fall I love Halloween it's just the general vibe that I really enjoy which is why I have a fake fireplace going for you all to get the ambiance situated I have so many fun atmospheric some spooky books even on this list I don't read a lot of horror but I'm tiptoeing, okay, for y'all and for myself because I'm a little curious. I am tiptoeing into spooky, atmospheric horror reads. I actually split this list into three different groups. The bottom tier of the list is just what I've called seasonal vibes. So it's books that like really fit the spooky season aesthetic in my mind that have been calling to me that I want to read but like these are low priority even though they have that spooky season vibe to them that tag in my head then I have a few hopefuls that I'm like fingers crossed really really want to get to this year this season and then I have my must reads so we're gonna go in ascending order so we'll start with just the vibey books that are catching my eye well then we'll go to the hopefuls and then to the must reads and if any of my seasonal vibe ones you really want me to read or you think that i would really like or that you liked let me know in the comments and i can always bump it up a little bit um but yes so without further ado let's start with the seasonal vibes category first up we have lore of the wilds by Anale sabrana <laughs> But I believe this is a debut and it is a fantasy romance novel and it looks like based on the cover there might be a love triangle which I'm not a huge fan of. But the cover is gorgeous. The cover is 100% why I put it on my TBR. But it says a library with a deadly enchantment, a fey lord who wants in, and a human woman willing to risk it all for a taste of power. I love a power hungry female lead because it's just like the absolute perfect subversion of you know the societal expectation that women shouldn't want power or shouldn't even have power for whatever reason so I just love when authors do that and so I'm really excited about this like I said it's a fantasy romance it is YA and I have been struggling with YA recently but hopefully this one will be good it actually just came out um September 5th of this year. Next on the list is Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson. I've heard that this is a book with queer witches. I mean, what says a spooky fall season better than queer witches? Literally nothing. Oh my god, this says a discovery of witches meets the craft in this first installment in an epic fantasy trilogy about a group of childhood friends who are also witches. I don't know, it just sounds really good. I love the found family, like the friendship group. I just, I really needed a witchy book and I've been wanting to read this since it came out. The cover is gorgeous. Then I am kind of scared to read this book because I feel like it's going to be very horror-esque. And like I said, I'm a little bit of a baby. Like I like certain horror gothic tropes and stories, but there's a fine line between something that's going to keep me up at night in a good way and something that is going to genuinely send me into a spiral. And it's very hard to toe that line, if you know what I'm saying. But I saw a copy of it on the free bookshelf at work and it's so gorgeous that I had to. So I picked up Sundial by Catriona Ward and I saw a bunch of people talking about this when it first came out, I think last year or the year before. Honestly, what actually sold me on picking this up is that it is blurbed by Sarah Gailey. And Sarah Gailey is one of my favorite authors that I have fallen in love with in recent years. I love their work so much. And I just read Just Like Home, which is their most recent title. 
um and it was amazing even if it's scary i just feel like i'm gonna like it and like look at this cover it's gorgeous i love everything about it it just looks amazing rob has spent her entire life running from sundial her family's ranch deep in the mojave desert and her childhood memories but she's worried about her daughter so it seems like this woman has left home and is returning to a sort of traumatic space physically and mentally with her daughter it seems like also part of the novel might be from the daughter's perspective and like she's kind of afraid of her mom so i'm very intrigued and i like i said really trust sarah gailey um and so seeing that they blurbed this ultimately is what called me to pick it up also I mean, it's a stunning, super floppy paperback for free. All you have to do is tell me free book and I am there. So again, if I feel called, if the vibe, you know, suits my reading mood, I might pick this up. After that, we have a classic. I really want to read more Shirley Jackson. I have read We've Always Lived in the Castle and I loved it. And I've read The Sundial, actually, which is weird. Didn't love that one. It was interesting, but I wasn't crazy about it. Um, I don't own a copy of this yet, but I really want this year to try The Haunting of Hill House. I've seen like the first few episodes of the Netflix adaptation of it. I actually didn't finish it because I'm just bad at finishing TV shows, but it was scary for sure, but it wasn't so bad that I think that it would like permanently traumatize me. So I do want to try and read that. So I'm hopefully gonna get my hands on a copy or maybe I'll do like an audio. Um, I don't really know what it's about other than that it's about a haunted house. There's like family stuff going on. Like someone has died, I think, and they're like cleaning out the house. I watched like three or four episodes of that show and I don't remember anything except this really disturbing scene in a morgue. Am I gonna be able to read that book? Next on the list of my seasonal vibes that I might get to, we have Slewfoot by Brahm. I have seen a lot of people talk about this specifically and most recently. I forget which video it was, but Katie Colson just recently mentioned it. I think it was in her Unhinged Women video. I will link it down below when I find it, but it's set during like the Puritan settler, white colonialism period and we have our main character whose husband has just recently died and she's like down on her luck and i think she makes a deal with a demon and then the town accuses her of being a witch um and i've heard that the demon and her might have some sort of like romance i've just heard good things about it and the cover again very intriguing and then last on my seasonal vibes mini category list is a collection of short stories that I've owned for a while that I really want to read and I just have not gotten around to yet. It's been sitting on my TBR shelf for ages and that is Between Worlds, Folk Tales from Britain and Ireland by Kevin Crossley Holland, illustrated by Francis Castle. Um, love the cover, but wait until you see. Isn't that just absolutely gorgeous? I'm so excited. Inside, so I mean like it's, I don't know if you can see, but like it's illustrated. So it's got these little mini illustrations. It's got stuff on the bottom of each of the pages. Um, there's stuff about magic, adventures and legends, fairies, men and women. I just feel like this would be a very fun thing to slowly chip away at throughout the month of October. Maybe not necessarily like read it all in one go, but kind of like story by story just throughout the month when I'm like feeling called to pick it up and i have like a a little chunk of time to do some reading i don't know i just i love this cover i think it's so cool okay next we're moving up to my hopefuls which is like the interim between my must reads and my vibey category there aren't many books on this list it's really just stuff that i'm like not emotionally ready to commit to reading or to saying that i'm gonna read because let's be honest you know i might not even read some of my must reads but you know that's a me problem anyways i am first and foremost gonna be reading not this book but the sequel to she who became the sun which is he who drowned the world it just came out at the very end of august i think and i loved this book the first one it was fantastic 
such a good historical fantasy military fantasy people have described this as mulan meets the song of achilles but i would say that like it kind of has a mulan vibe but really what they're saying is like the writing is fantastic it's very like military political fantasy leaning so like know that going in there's a lot of that and a lot of like the mental like moving around and like the posturing and like the thought that is behind war but it's also just so visceral and Shelley Parker Chan is just brilliant. So I cannot wait to read the second one. I don't know if it's a duology or if there's gonna be more in the series. And then after that is Misery by Stephen King. I'm reading this book for two reasons. First, one of my friends wants to read a Stephen King and I already owned this one and it's kind of short. So I was like, hey, do you want to buddy read it? And she said, yes. So we are going to buddy read this and then watch the movie together. But also we are doing a spooky reading challenge at work. And one of the prompts is to read a Stephen King book. And, you know, I'm competitive and I love a reading challenge. I love, you know, a read-a-thon of any kind. So there are a bunch of different prompts. Some of my other books on here might actually fit those prompts, but really specifically, I remember I have to read a Stephen King book to get a certain, you know, point value or whatever. Um, and I have this really cool, like, mass market paperback used copy that I found at, like, Half Price Books. What I do know about this book is that it's about a woman who kidnaps her favorite author and I think like tortures him and forces him to write a sequel. That's the premise and that's what I've heard. Um, so we'll see if I actually get to it and if it's any good. Kilua. Last but not least in the hopefuls category is a book that has been on my fall TBR for I think three or four years in a row and I have never read it because I am trash. And that is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I have never read an Oscar Wilde before and I've heard fantastic things about this one in particular, just like this gothic horror-esque tale. Um, I don't know anything about it other than this guy makes a deal with some kind of demon or does something shady and the picture of himself ages, but he does not. Um, so I'm expecting, you know, some thoughts about vanity and beauty and how that intersects with gender, perhaps. So we shall see if I finally get to it. But I've been saying that I was going to read this for ages. So I kind of feel like I should simply for that reason. But, you know, we'll see what happens. Okay, now we are to the exciting part of the video. My must reads. Some of them I have to read for book clubs, but then also most of them are releases that I have been anticipating for months and months and months. So without further ado, first and foremost, I am going to be rereading Two Wrongs Make a Right by Chloe Lees. Lisa. I realized that I have been saying my favorite author's name wrong this whole time. I saw in an interview, I think, that she did, either on Instagram live or something that I saw on like online that her name is not actually pronounced Lise. I think it's Lisa, like Lisa, Z U, like there's a Z sound in there. So I'm gonna try and break that habit because that just makes me feel trash on the inside knowing that I've been saying her name wrong this whole time. But anyway, this is the first installment in a new series by Chloe Lisa, who writes the Bergman Brothers books. Um, this came out last fall and the sequel comes out on October 10th. So in order to prepare emotionally for that. I'm going to be rereading this book, which I absolutely devoured, annotated, loved with my entire soul. Rereading this and then transitioning right into the sequel, which comes out on October 10th, Better Hate Than Never. This one is a much ado about nothing. Fake dating for revenge, like enemies to friends to lovers sort of vibe. It's fantastic. And the second one is about Bia's sister, Kate and it is a Taming of the Shrew, 10 Things I Hate About You inspired love story. It's a childhood enemies to lovers and I am just foaming at the mouth. I cannot wait for this book to come out. I'm gonna absolutely devour it the moment that it comes out. I'm probably gonna take off work the next day so that I can read the whole thing. Next is another book that is a sequel. The sequel to The Children of Gods and Fighting Men, which is one of my best books of the year, if not the best book that I've read so far. 
I also devoured this. It is another Irish book and it is an Irish historical fantasy, I guess you could say. It was absolutely fantastic and the sequel is out in the UK, but it doesn't come out here in the United States until October. I keep forgetting the exact date, but I'm going to be reading the sequel to this as soon as I can as well because I think about this book all the time. It is so good. Um, and then also I'm going to be rereading Black Sun for a book club. And then also because I really want to reread and annotate this before I dive into Fevered Star, which is the second one. So Fevered Star is not necessarily on my TBR. I just want to try and tackle this specifically for book club, but also to annotate it and take it a little bit slower this time. I have read this before, as I said, um, but I read this in, for like a 24 hour reading vlog. So I really buzzed through it the first time and I just forget some vital like world building information. But I do remember absolutely simping over Shala who is one of the main characters and so I really want to reread it. Okay that is it for like the sequels, the releases, the rereads part of this category. Um, after that we have Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This is another book that I'm going to be reading for book club and one that is just like the spooky season title. The cover, the title, everything about it and I've just heard so many good things. I cannot wait to read it. In this book our main character's cousin sends her a letter. She's been newly married and she's anxious, things aren't going well and she sends our main character a letter and she goes to this gothic esque estate to kind of investigate the mystery of what's going on and i've just heard really good things very vibey thrilling exciting i am also going to be reading the starless sea i have been wanting to read an aaron morgenstern title for ages um i own the night circus i do not own the starless sea but it will be getting read so um this one i also don't really know what it's about i am trash i think it's about like magical books though or like artifacts of some sort of magical component. I think it's like a magical realism, literary fantasy, but like light on the fantasy. Okay, another seasonal title that I am dying to read and must literally tie myself down to read. Like I will not go through another spooky season without having read this book. And that is The Sentence by Louise Erdrich. I haven't ever read anything by Louise Erdrich, even though I own three of her books what is wrong with me it's about our main character tookie who has been recently released from incarceration and has gotten a job at a bookstore that is haunted and i think it's like her engaging with and grappling with this ghost it says it's a wickedly funny ghost story a tale of passion of a complex marriage and of a woman's relentless errors okay last but certainly not least is a book i literally bought today because last night I stayed up until one in the morning finishing Bunny by Mona Awad. It was fantastic. It's one of the most fun reading experiences I've had this year. It felt like I just wanted to like run into a classroom and discuss this book and write papers about it and just analyze it and think about it for ages. It was so good. Mona Awad is brilliant. And so after work today, I was like, I have to go buy another one of her books. And I was trying to decide which one. I ultimately decided to buy Rouge, which is her newest title. It literally just came out last week or the week before. And it is like a snow white gothic retelling, an exploration, examination of beauty and the cult of beauty and vanity and all of this fun stuff. And it just sounds so fantastic. But honestly, at this point, I am just, I'm feral for Mona Awad's writing. I need more of it and this cover is amazing. It sounds like exactly what I want to read right now and so I bought it and I'm gonna start it tonight. Yeah, this is the last one on my list and probably the first one I'm gonna read. Yeah, let me know if any of these books are on your spooky season TBR, if you've read them, what your thoughts are, what's on your spooky season TBR, what are you prioritizing, what are your must reads, any of that jazz drop it in the comments below thank you so much for coming and watching my video it means the world to me i love you all don't forget to like comment and subscribe if that's your jam and i hope to see you in my next video happy reading happy writing and happy living peace out